just bow your heads and let us let us give thanks to the to the Father. Heavenly Father, blessed be you, King of the universe, that, that provided all things. We worship you, we bless you, we honor you. For all things are possible through you, through your Holy Son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We praise you, we honor you, Father, for allowing us this privilege to be here in your house, to be able to give you sacrifice of praise and to, to learn, Father God, that your Holy Spirit may guide us and give us the wisdom and knowledge that we need to go out into the world and to be that light, that we may evangelize the good news that you are Christ, that you are powerful, and that your coming is soon. We worship you, we honor you, and we bless you. And in Yeshua, in Jesus' name we say, Amen. Okay. All right. Well, today we're going to get started. Now, uh, we finished kind of like, if you want to call it a series, we're going over a series of the different feasts and uh, festivals of uh, God's appointed times, right? Passover and Sukkot and Shavuot. And so we actually finished all those. And uh, we will probably revisit it coming up soon. Uh, does anyone know when the next uh the next one, which one that is coming up? Yom Kippur, right? The Feast of Trumpets, right? Actually, I like to call it Yom Teruah is actually the way they say it in the Bible. But of course, they change it now and it's called Yom Kippur. That's a whole thing to get into. But <laughs> uh, but I mean, yes, the Feast of Trumpets is coming up. I think it's in October. So maybe eventually we can kind of, you know, prepare and we can have a, a, a nice celebration of course right after that is atonement and after that is Sukkot so they all kind of fall pretty fast after that so praise God so maybe we'll revisit that those lessons when it gets close to it but today what I was going to go over and I do think that this is something that is very important uh, it's the basis of uh, what we believe in uh, the foundation of the Christian church and um it is grace and faith and obedience, okay? Now, those things, uh, everyone, everyone obviously has heard of grace, right? Everyone's heard of faith, and we all know what obedience is. But they are interlocked. They're, they're together, right? And that's what we're going to learn about today, and we're going to go over it. And, you know, I got, like, so many notes that I'm going to be reading and stuff. Uh, so we will not finish today, but maybe we'll continue it. Uh, in uh, next week or the next week after. So, what are grace, faith, and uh, faith and obedience, and how do they all work together? It's a question, right? Now, have you ever heard of someone uh, saying obeying God's commandments is also rejecting God's grace? Has anyone ever heard that? Like, if you obey God's commandments, you're also rejecting His grace. No. Well, actually, believe it or not, oh, that's crazy because, like, when I was growing up, it was, like, a huge movement, right? And uh, there was, like, all different religions coming out of that. And a actually, the premise of this was that the more that you sinned, the more grace that you had. And if you go to Romans, uh, well, you don't have to go. I'll just read it. But Romans 5, uh, 20, it says, now the law came in to increase the trespasses, the sin. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. And that's basically where they uh, derive their whole religion off. They were basically saying where sin, where there was more sin, there was more grace. So they were like, ah, oh, so that's how it works. So the more we sin, the more we have grace, you know. And anyways, they took it all out of context. And there was, uh, I don't remember, I, I, I remember it was like, uh, uh, creciendo en gracia and, and, and growing in grace. There was like a pastor, a huge pastor for a while, Jose Luis something. Anyways, he was at the end, he called himself the Antichrist. So obviously it fell apart. But uh, yeah, believe it or not, yeah. It was like when I was like in my, you know, well, it was a while back. But <laughs> anyways, uh, but th what we're going to learn today, we're going to go over grace faith and obedience and exactly how we are supposed to go do it through scripture through the bible not from man-made traditions and laws and stuff that have been passed through generations but we're actually going to just go to the bible right okay so let's go with grace now i'm going to read what i have for grace it says biblical grace is often defined simply as unmerited favor unmerited favor it is a gift that you did not earn God's grace is simply God extending his unmerited favor on his undeserving people. 
There is nothing that we can do to earn God's grace. So, what is grace? Unmerited favor basically is God extending a gift, extending a blessing, giving his love to us. There is nothing that we can do to earn God's grace. He simply gave it to us, even if we didn't deserve it, right? So basically, grace is a gift from God, right? Everyone say with me, grace is a gift from God. All right, okay, so by definition, uh, God, through no action of our own, God owes us nothing. We know that. We are all undeserving of any blessing and only deserve the curse, right? Which is death, because we have all sinned. That is, we have broken God's law. God, God's ultimate act of grace is his gift of salvation, saving us from the second death. Okay? What is the second death? Now, we are all appointed. It says we, uh, every man is appointed to death. But the second death is the one that we need to be worried about, right? The second death is the death of the soul, right? So one day, you know, this fleshly body is going to dissolve and go back to the dust. But where what really counts is our spirit, right? Our soul. That is the second death. And that is what God had freed us from. Okay? Okay, so grace. Everyone, grace is a gift from God, right? Okay, faith. Let me read faith. Faith is the foundation and source. And I'm talking about biblical grace, biblical faith, right? Uh, biblical faith is the foundation and source of all our behavior. Faith is believing, trusting, and committing ourselves to God and his word. Having faith in God and in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, as the Son of God, is the very same as stating one has faith or believes, commits, and trusts in God's word. Okay, so faith basically is believing, trusting with all your heart in something, okay? And at biblical grace is obviously we believe in our Messiah, uh, our Heavenly Father, right? Christ. We believe it so much that we know it's real. That means that when we open our Bible, uh, every everything in, the, in Scripture, we should be like, that's real. You know, uh, I, I was uh, when I was studying and I was like, well, you know, do do non-believers have faith? You know, absolutely. You know, people out there in the world, I mean, they have faith in a lot of things. And, and us, too, we have faith in so many things that they're, it's going to work or or things just just happen. And uh, we have so much we have so much like blinded faith. Um, an example would be I'm going to attack like uh like, for example, I'll go with, like, NASA and stuff like that, you know? And if you know me, uh, I like to, like, uh, kind of research a lot of stuff on, like, the moon landing and stuff like that. And that's for another time. But you should look into it. But it, it's, it's, it's not real. But <laughs> anyways, uh, non-believers have a lot of faith in, like, science, right, what the world teaches us. Let's go with NASA and, like, okay, so what we're told is, you know, there's, galaxies and trillions and trillions of planets and suns and stars and and all these things out there right actually when you go to school and uh you open your textbook in like science class you'll see like pictures of planets and novas and solar systems and you know they're not real pictures right like who took those pictures right they have a picture of like different galaxies right like the uh, i think it's um uh the the jupe uh is it uh Beetlejuice is another, like, different, like, we're the Milky Way, and they have like, Beetlejuice and all these other galaxies. And they have really nice pictures in your textbook. Okay, anyways, people have faith in that. People really believe in those things, right? Believe in, th even though they can't prove it, even though they've actually told you those are just theories, right? But they have so much faith in the way, in, in these man regular men that scientists and stuff and they come up with these theories and, and come up with stuff and they write it in textbooks and stuff like that and they teach it to us as fact and then we take that and we're like i have faith in that you know as fantastical as it sounds so then we get criticized as christians right but then these same sec you know secular people or like science and stuff they look at us and they look at the bible and they're like come on that is like very fantastical fantasy look look at all that they because if you really read scripture you're gonna find a lot of stories in the bible that are like 
wow, that's, that's kind of, almost like kind of weird, right? Like when you, we come to miracles and, you know, all these miraculous things happening in Scripture. And so when the world looks at us and they're like, do y'all really believe it all? Come on. I go, yes, we believe it all. Everything, every single word, every single dot, every single um, a sentence that is in Scripture, we believe it. And they look at us as it's kind of fantastical, it's not real. But then we, hey, you have faith too. You believe in a lot of crazy stuff too. And the thing is, what you believe in was created by man. What we believe in was created by God. So there you go. So you just like, bam, drop the mic on them and say, we believe in that. Amen. Okay, so we have faith in our Heavenly Father. Is it possible to believe in Christ and our Heavenly Father and not believe in scripture is it no of course not right if we because in scripture it says that god is the word right in the beginning was was the word and the word was was god and the word was god right if god's word is true then both jesus Yeshua, and these scriptures must be true there should be nothing in scripture that we should conclude that is no longer true amen because we know that god is the same yesterday today and forever right so what does that mean a lot of times people say you know we, we we express these terms all the time god is the same yesterday today and forever and we have all scripture and we have all these laws and commandments and different things like that and we're, we're and examples of people throughout the bible but we believe that today we are kind of set apart that we only have to do certain things to be saved grace right if we're not ca careful we can fall into the, like remember earlier when i was talking about this religion where they believed in you know hey it's grace we can do whatever we want and as crazy as that sounds a lot of times if we step back and look at what we're doing we can be like well hey you know we might not be so you know we might do and be doing some crazy things too amen so at the end of the day we want to always make sure that we are right with god amen Okay, so we got uh, grace, a gift from God, right? And faith, right? Faith is committing and believing with all your heart. Now we got obedience, and I'm going to throw works in there too. Obedience and works, and I'm going to read it. Obedience is the result of our true faith. This is, this is the kicker right here, okay? <laughs> obedience is the result of our true faith. It is the resulting output of believing, committing, and trusting in God's word. After faith and trust have already been established, the more faith one has in God's word, the more faith, the more that faith will manifest as obedience to God's word. So what does that mean? What am I saying right here? Okay, we have grace, right? Through Christ, he gave his life for us, right? On the cross, we can't earn grace. There's nothing we can do to earn grace. That was given to us. And it was fulfilled on the cross by Jesus, by Christ, right? Okay, that's grace. Then, once he, do, once he gave us that gift, then we accept him as our Lord and Savior, right? Then we have faith. We start believing, reading scripture and stuff like that, and then more and more our faith starts growing, right? We start believing, hey, this is real. God is real. Everything that is written in here. And then your, your, your faith grows. You know, you start feeling the Holy Spirit. You start wanting to do more things. Then the result of that is obedience. You know, and that is where I do believe that we as Christians, especially the Christian church today, is where we fall on, pretty much on our faces. And it's happened throughout time. You look at the, you know, Israel, right? God gives them grace, and and then, and then um, they are prospered and they're blessed. And then once they start disobeying, boom, everything falls apart. They get taken over and stuff like that. And that's the same thing today. We have grace. Praise God that He loved us so much that He gave us grace, even if we not if we do not deserve it. He still gave it to us. So we give him faith. We have faith. We believe in him, right? Even though we weren't there. I, I wasn't there for all the Bible. I didn't see Moses part the sea and stuff like that. But I believe because I have faith. 
So the result of that is going to be obedience. Amen. Uh, maybe an example would be like, I'll use, I'll use Brother Juan as an example because uh, I've known Juan for a long time. But, you know, God bless you. <laughs> you know, he came into the faith, right? And little by little, uh, obviously grace is first there, and he came into the faith. He accepted the Lord as a Savior. So what does Juan do? Little by little, he starts looking. He starts opening his Bible. He starts reading Scripture. All of a sudden, he starts doing little things to start obeying, things that he probably didn't do before in his life. He's, first of all, you know, he'll go to church. You know, he'll start praying, you know, and stuff like that. What is happening by reading Scripture and by obeying his commandments and things like that, his, his uh, faith starts growing. He becomes a better Christian, even a better person. You know, he, start, uh, he starts denying the things that he used to do in his former life and starts doing the things that he knows is right today. And it's going to be a work in progress. We're all going through this every day. But you can see when people are growing. You can, you can see the fruits when people are, are reading Scripture and they are obeying. Because I can guarantee you that if one accepted the Lord and said he had faith, but he didn't, if it was disobedient and never wanted to obey anything, that would manifest in his faith. Eventually, he wouldn't, he wouldn't keep coming. He wouldn't be here. Because if, he really, if you really have faith, you, you won't want to obey the things that God does, that, that is telling us, which are his commandments. Amen. And now you see today, the fine man today, a man of God, right? All right. All right. So let's keep going. <clears throat> So we are commanded to be holy, right? And as, as, as God is holy, holy simply means set apart. So when we come into the faith, we are set apart. Just like the people of Israel, um, <clears throat> since the beginning, when God gave, gave uh, the, the law to, the, uh, to Israel, right? And Shavuot, remember, we we're going over that. He basically, that's when he set them apart as a nation. Now, one, one thing that I was, uh, when I was reading and I was finding interesting is that what is it that separated the people of Israel from the rest of the world? Or what separated, I'll even go further back, what separated Abraham from other people or Noah, you know? What is it that they did different? You know, I mean, because obviously we could say, oh, well, they're, you know, they're, they, you know, Moses at that time, they were already, you know, coming from the tribes of, and that's why they were different. But let's go to, let's go back to even Abraham. There was still no, no tribes of Israel or anything like that. There was basically no Jews, no Gentiles, anything like that. There was, it was just one race, right? There were all, so what is it that separated Abraham? Abraham, it says, followed God's commandments and his statutes and his laws. That's what separated him from the rest of the world. That's why he chose Abraham. That's why he chose Noah. That's why, uh, that's why he chose Israel, because he gave him the commandments. He gave him the law. And that's why he said, I am choosing you as my treasure now. I want you to be set apart which is exactly what is happening today. When we come to Christ and we accept him, we have to be distinguished from the world. We have to be set apart. That is why when we follow him and we learn and read scripture and pray and the Holy Spirit guides us and we follow his commandments, we become set apart. We're not supposed to look like the rest of the world, which I know I'm constantly up here kind of saying, but even, even other churches, when you look at it, we should not be resembling so much of what the world is uh, what, what the world does today. We have to be set apart. In fact, we should constantly have people almost persecuting us and saying, "What y'all do that? That's weird." Or you know, y'all y'all celebrate feast days or God's appointed days. That's that's so. That's you know, what are y'all a cult or something? It's like it's okay. We are set apart. God chose us to be uh, a royal priesthood to be able to witness to the rest of the world. Amen. Is everyone still with me? Okay, all right. We still got, okay, we got 14 minutes, so we'll keep going. Okay, so we all fallen short of God's perfect righteousness as defined by the law, God's instructions for man. 
God's law was given to us to bless us if we obey, and a curse, uh, and to curse us when we disobey. That is sin, right? We have all broken God's law, and we are all under the curse and doomed to die. Paul calls this the law of sin and death. The breaking of God's law is sin, right? We all we all that know that, right? We've gone over that, right? Transgression of the law is sin, right? Um, so once we receive grace through faith, we are no longer under the law of sin and death, as written by Paul. And you can actually read that in Romans uh, chapter 5 through 8. So what am I saying? What, what are we saying here? Um, what is Paul saying here? A lot of times people can get confused and take, and take things out of context. And the more that I study and read is that uh, a lot of times people are like, the law was abolished and God's commandments are done away with and stuff like that. And he never said that, right? Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law, right? And the prophets. He said that. Yeshua himself said these things. But Paul sometimes, there, you know, that Paul says that the law is dead, right? But he wasn't talking about the actual law. He was talking about the law of sin and death. That's the thing that we sometimes get confused with. What do you mean the law of sin and death? What is that? Well, when Jesus fulfilled the law, right, on the cross, he, remember, he goes down to, to hell and to Hades, and he basically dominates and defeats death and sin. That means that we are no longer doomed to go to hell because now he gave the ultimate grace by giving his life. And now by faith, we believe and we are obedient to him. And then we can escape sin and we can escape the second death. Basically, the law, that law that we were under is dead. And there's many laws, right? When you look at it, there's the law of God. There's the law of nature. There's uh, the law of sin and death. There's a lot of things that are regulating our our, our world, right? Well, that was destroyed and conquered by Jesus. And because of that, we are now free. We have the opportunity to be free. But if we disobey, then we are under the curse. And the curse is right back into sin and death. <clears throat> but if we obey, we are in a blessing, right? Okay, so uh, let's keep going. God offered man a way to eternal life. And if we have faith, if we believe, commit, and trust in him, God did not have to offer, like God did not have to offer this to us. <clears throat> he owes us nothing, and we can do nothing to escape what was rightfully deserved to us, uh, which is, you know, death, the second death, or even the first death, uh, which was committed in the garden. Uh, so anything God extends to us is a benefit of grace. Remember, we're saying a gift. His plan of salvation is a gift he gave us because why? He loves us. At the end of everything, when you, if you leave today, you, you can leave today saying, what is grace? Grace is a gift from God that represents his love. He loves us so much that even if we were undeserving, even if, uh, you know, there's nothing that we could do to earn it, he still gave it to us all the way even to sacrificing his life on the cross that is grace that is biblical grace and that is what we should jump up for joy and say thank you father for the grace thank you for believing in us okay um and then of course then we have faith right faith is trusting and believing believing so much that you find that everything that you read is true you know and I, and I challenge you, you know, go, go into scripture, you know, read it, you know, and, and sometimes you're going to find like, uh, lately, um, <clears throat> we've been, uh, doing our, our little readings at the house and, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, Ismael and my son, you know, sometimes we'll read through some, uh, we're, we're in Genesis right now. We're starting from the very beginning and we'll read through like certain chapters. And, uh, sometimes, you know, he'll ask questions like, man, this is, that's kind of strange. Why did they do it like that? Or what, you know, and, and, you know, Oh, yeah, when you start reading and you start taking everything like, hey, this is true, this is real, you know, then uh, now obviously there's going to be instances of metaphors and like things that represent, but a lot of it is true. A lot of it, you know, we got to take scripture for what it is. And so, you know, sometimes it was like, yeah, yeah, I guess it, 
you know, well, I mean, they're talking about giants and they're talking about all these things, you know. So sometimes when, when we have been so indoctrinated with our science-based teachers, you know, that which I do think it's always been a plan for Satan, the adversary, to kind of take us away from really believing in the true God. Like, it's always been into trying to believe in ourselves and the and and the the uh, rules and laws of our you know the people that are over us, man, and their traditions and stuff like that. That has always been Satan's goal: is to take us away from the truth. To make us disobey, because disobeying God leads to a curse, and the curse leads to sin and death, and that's what He wants. Amen. So, uh, so yes, faith, believing in everything, and then the the uh, the result of faith is obedience. So, grace, faith, and obedience. Amen. Uh, let us go to First Corinthians. 3 13 to 15 and actually I, I had printed out uh like because we're gonna i have a lot of verses but we'll probably won't get there this week uh so i didn't bring them there because i don't think i'm gonna get to them yet but i i actually printed out pages for everybody to follow along <clears throat> but we'll probably do that next time but anyways in first corinthians uh 3 thir- 13 through 15 it says um it says each one's work will become manifest For the day will disclose it, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone works, if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> You're like, what? what? What's going on here? So when I was studying, basically, we as Christians obviously have a duty and uh, to go out and preach the gospel, right? At the Great Commission, right? We're supposed to go out there and preach, preach to all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Why? But what else are we supposed to do? We're supposed to follow him, follow his commandments. Why? Because... That is where we're going to receive our reward in heaven. Yes. Like when I was when I was reading this and I was like, oh, wow. So this is actually talking about believers. And uh, actually, let me let me just read Matthew 519 for, for y'all real quick. And, and then and then it'll be clear what I'm trying to say. Matthew 519 says, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So basically right here, it's saying those, if you want to access this reward, you know how when I was growing up uh, and uh, they always said, hey, you know, when you go and you you preach and you you do things for the Lord and you, you do your ministry and stuff like that, you know, you're going to get rewards in heaven. Ever, has everyone heard that before, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was little, they used to tell me that I was going to get like a crown and like some big jewels. And the more that I did for the Lord, uh, more jewels I would have. Or I have a bigger mansion, you know, and stuff like that, you know. And I always thought, oh, okay, that sounds nice. But I never really truly believed it, you know. Uh, but then little by little, yeah, when I was reading this, it's almost like in heaven we are going to be like in some, like, is there going to be kind of like a caste system? maybe because it's determining on what we do here on earth so how do we access this reward you're probably saying like what can i do i want a bigger mansion in heaven and you're probably saying like look as long as i make it to heaven i'm good right like i make it in that's awesome but remember it's for eternity right uh we're gonna be there for a long time and i I, you know i joke around it's like i don't know if i can i don't know if you know isaiah having a huge mansion and mine's not as big you know after like a couple of thousand years i might be like man i should have i should have did a little bit more man like you know he has a nice mansion you know so anyways how do we access that well it says right here in matthew 5 19 it says um uh those who break the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom so they're still going to heaven they're just going to be the least in the kingdom but whosoever does and teaches them shall be called great 
in the kingdom of heaven. Basically, teaching the commandments, God's word, to others. That is how we access that reward. Is it not necessarily preaching or, or singing? And so all that is part of it. But the ultimate way to know that you're going to get that big mansion, I guess, is teaching the truth, the way and the life, which is the word of God, which is his commandments. And then if we do that, we will receive reward in heaven. Amen. Okay, so if we have faith, we will desire to keep God's commandments. And the greater the faith, the greater the desire. Our faith is evidence by our obedience. Because our faith, we strive to be obedient. Obedient is keeping, is the keeping of God's commandments. Disobedience is breaking God's commandments, which is sin. God is God demonstrating grace. Is I'm sorry, grace is God demonstrating His love for us. Obedience is us demonstrating our love in return. So remember, I've talked about this before. Grace is God telling us that he loves us right i mean there's no doubt about it so much so that he gave his own life for us that is ultimate grace you know sometimes i think like how much love does god have for us and and i i don't remember i I don't know if i was talking to my wife one time and i was like saying you know if how much love would um like, I would give up my life, basically, for my family, you know? And, and, and I'm sure a lot of here will, will give up their life if it really came to it for their family, right? But then I started thinking, would I give up my life? Or actually, no. Would I give up, I'll use my son Ismael, would I give up his life for someone else? That's tough. Think about it. Would you give up someone that you love dearest, that is so close to you, for somebody else's kid or for somebody else? I mean, to me, I'll be like, I I don't think I can. (laughs) That's, I don't think I could do that. But Jesus, our Heavenly Father, He gave up His Son for us. That means that's the equivalent of me giving up my Son, giving His life, for somebody else that is ultimate grace and that is something that we cannot earn that is a gift from our Heavenly Father and, the, and through that we have faith and because we have faith what what should trend what should come out of faith is obedience because obedience is the way we show our love back to our Heavenly Father, and after everything that He's done for us, that is what we should do. Obey Him and worship Him. That is how we return our love to Him. Let us stand. Let us pray. Obviously, we didn't get anywhere close to finishing today, but dear Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we worship you, we honor you, and we bless you. We thank you so much, Father, for your heavenly grace. Your your unmerited favor, your love that you have given to us through your Holy Son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We praise you and we know that there is nothing, nothing that we can do to to possibly give you thanks to the the huge gift that you have given to us and presented to us through grace. We ask, Father God, that you strengthen us with your Holy Spirit, with that we can have faith, that we can be the, the light of the world, and through that, evidence of that will be obedience to you, obedience to your word, obedience to your law, obedience to your commandments. That is where we want to be because we know that there is reward, there is blessing, there is honor in worshiping you and follow upon you and following you, to be set apart people, to be holy priests. We worship you, we honor you, and we love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Thank you, Father, and we worship you. And in Yeshua, in Jesus' holy name, we say, amen. Hallelujah. Well, give a big hand clap to the Lord. And... uh